we are behind the front grandstands now, mm -hmm. and you started to tell me what you're going to do here. So, Sunday morning of the June 5th Cup race. Yep. What are you going to do right here? Well, there's going to be a big stage here. It's going to be open up to anybody, any of our fans come in. You don't have to have a special ticket as long as you got a race ticket. You can come in here. We're going to start off pretty earlier. I've been talking to Tim Duggar, the country music Great. act. Great. Entertainment. Yeah, and I was, I was uh, trading texts with him yesterday. We're going to do donuts with Duggar. So I you like can it. Come in. <laughs> we'll be throwing donuts to the crowd. He's going to be playing music. And that's going to be the lead into the special show, which I hope works out well. I mean, my, my, co my host for this show, I'm kind of concerned about because you never know what he might say. But we're going to do Race Day Live with Kenny Wallace. Yes, it's back. Yeah, and John Roberts is <laughs> right. coming in with us. Right. We're going to have a big stage here. It's going to be a, a dandy. It's, uh, we're looking at a couple different options, but even looking at a double decker stage is a possibility. I like it. Because all this area right here is going to be redressed. It's going to be, have a co totally different look. And we're going to have that stage, have you doing your show. We're going to let the fans gather around. And then behind that, we're working with the great folks from Screenworks. Sam Ardinger at Screenworks is going to bring him on his let big me, mobile trucks. Let Andrew. me bring them up to speed. So we've already announced it, Chris yeah. Blair and, and myself, Chris's idea. We're going to bring back the NASCAR race day show. Uh, we want all of you to get parked. Come to the stage. I didn't know about Tim Duggar, great country western singer. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do NASCAR race day. And uh, John Roberts is coming back. Uh, he's going to be the host. Uh, we're going to. It's going to be my job. I'm going to get some drivers. We're going to do driver interviews. We're going to have music. We're going to have big screens. You can grab a cold beer and. We're going to make sure everybody has a good time. Get parked early, right? Yeah, we want everybody to get in here early. That's, you know, the whole incentive. We want everybody to come in and make a whole day out of right. it. Right. And, you know, we're going to be having some other concerts and things going on after your show. But you know, our goal is how many people can we get in here early so they can all have a good debt time, a good full experience. And we, we've even been talking about maybe trying to do a few little uh, bets on how many people you can get here for me. So you, you, so you think tailgating at the Kansas City Chiefs football game is a big deal or up in Lambeau? This is going to be the real tailgating. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> you know, if we, Woo! Earnhardt's my man. If we can get 5,000 people here around the stage, we might even like jump off the stage and break a table or something. <laughs> I, I'd even say we were going to do some stupid human tricks, too, if we get enough people out here for it. So that's kind of our idea. We want to bring back kind of like what the old Letterman show I like was. It. You know? I like and it. Just have some fun, do some crazy stuff like Are you, you guys telling used to me do. we're going to drop a watermelon off the top of that grandstands up there? I hadn't thought about that. I was actually working on trying to get one of those Alka-Seltzer suits and drop you into a tank of water. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I love> you. <laughs> okay. So, so that's one of the things we're going to be doing. And, and while we're here, you know, since we're out of the truck, if you take a look over here, if you ever came back, came to the racetrack when it was Gateway back in the old uh, Infinity days or right. Bush Series days, right. one of the big problems we always had here is there wasn't enough parking. Right. So that's one of the things that Curtis has worked on from the very beginning. When Curtis bought this racetrack, it was 150 acres. We're now over 700 acres with some acquisitions he's made recently. And one of the big things you'll notice is that field out there? It's 200 acres. That was never here. That that yeah. field was never ever here. Yes, yeah, so that's a lot more parking. So Curtis took uh, took uh, that over in December of 2016. Brought in equipment. Took all the trees out. Hey, and come, he's been working. Come constantly. here with me. Yeah. Come here, Austin. Yo, hey, y'all got to see this. When we talk about worldwide technology raceway and complex. Here it is. Check out this legendary drag strip right there. That's one of the things, too. We're actually going to put the drag strip in use on race weekend. We're whoa, some... whoa, whoa. Come here. Tell me about this now. You're going to put the drag strip in use. Well, we're not going to be racing on it. But what we're going to be doing is taking that space there. You know, one of the big things at these events is activations for the sponsors, for the different right. manufacturers. Right. So more than likely, we're going to have a, a ride and drive program going on, taking place right there on the uh, on that surface so people can get in, take a Finally. test drive on the car. Finally, entertainment before the cup races. I've been talking to NASCAR executives, and I said, look, we all know we messed up getting rid of a lot of entertainment before mm -hmm. these races. Mm -hmm. You are going to bring back entertainment. That's what our goal is. I and mean, even one of the things we've done that we've done in the last few years with our IndyCar race, we have a big pre-race party called the Rumble Before the Roar. Rumble, baby! Where basically you come in, you pay one price, you get into an area where we've got games, we've got uh, discounted prices on uh, beverages. Uh, you can buy a souvenir cup and you can fill it up as many times as you want. Beer? But, 
Maybe. Anheuser-Busch is right there. And what we're going to be doing is, so the pavilion area at the drag strip, which we use during the drag races, that's going to be turned into the rumble before the roar party area. So that'll be taking place. You too. know it's going to be good tailgating when I got to go, hey, the mm -hmm. cup race is getting ready to start. Let's get to our exactly, seat. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's what our goal is. We want everybody to come here just to have a great time. So right. We get, so the one thing we didn't have before, they didn't have before when they had the old uh, Xfinity series or the Bush series, or whatever it was at the time. Yeah, Bush series. Yeah, is we didn't have all this available to us. Now we've Good got Good looking available. parking out there now. And this is probably, that's the main thing that Curtis worked on. And then he went in and uh, because there's always a little bit of struggle getting cars in and out. He, he built a three lane road, all pavement, leading everybody in and out of so that. So let me stop you right there. Yeah. What is the plan? Now the Bomberito 500 IndyCar race, mm -hmm. you put over 40,000 people in here. And I never heard one bad word about getting in and getting out. What is it that you all are doing different now to get people in and people out? Well, I think the biggest thing is that's Curtis's number one concern. And and I, I recognize that nine years ago when I came to work for him, uh, we had our first NHRA race and I was out in the road help, helping direct traffic and so was Curtis. Yeah. So when you get the owner of the racetrack who's concerned about getting people in and getting people out, and that's one of his main priorities. And of all of our conversations, every day when we're in here, Curtis and I are spending an hour a day talking to traffic engineers, parking companies, the Department of Transportation, the state police, working on this what this traffic plan is going to look like so that we can get everybody in and get them out. And the biggest part of that is communication. So you're going to see a lot of stuff coming up with our group where we're, all we're talking about is the best way to get to and from the racetrack. And that's another one of those reasons I'm trying to load this thing up with as much entertainment before the race. I want to get people so you don't want to come in. Get, come on in, let's party, and then you don't want to leave right away. <laughs> exactly. Well, then even post race, I'm going to open up the racetrack when the race is over. I'm encouraging fans to go out, walk the racetrack. We're going to have some music. Well, going I'll on be out darn. There. So when the NASCAR Cup race is over on June 5th, you're going to allow fans to walk on the racetrack. Yeah, because that's one of those things I always. That's thought a was great cool. idea. And I, and I recognize that from many, many years ago. I was at Bristol, and this is back. Oh I, my gosh! Could you like imagine? I think it's like 88 or 89, and I walked out on the racetrack. This is back when it was still asphalt before yeah. it went concrete. And I, I started walking around the track, and I saw how all the marbles were built up and the way the track – you remember how Bristol used to be? Oh, it was yeah. paved, and it would actually – the asphalt would roll up. Yeah. And for me, walking around the track was the coolest could thing. Could you imagine you if know? the fans could have took some of that rubber, put it in a jar, and take it home? Exactly. It would be like, like Schrader on his wall. Down yeah. Down shop, yeah, you know, Kenny, his... Kenny Schrader probably has some over 100 jars – and every dirt track Schrader goes to, he grabs dirt, puts it in, labels it. So at Kenny Schrader's race shop, mm -hmm. he's got dirt, soil from every racetrack across the United States. Listen, that's a that's a brilliant ideal. Mm -hmm. So you fans are going to have a lot more to do here than we've had in the past. It's a brilliant idea. I may have to sell them a Ziploc bag or something so they can do it. <laughs> Bring your Ziploc bag, yeah. get a little rubber. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing, you'll see the marbles, and a lot of people don't even realize that. They watch the race and they leave, but you get down there and there's that build up and there's all that yeah. stuff there. So Tire it, wear. Yeah, then you, they can do that. They can watch the trucks leave. We just want to make it where people don't want to leave the racetrack. We want people to stick around, and this, I mean, this is everybody's racetrack. Man, and great idea. Have some fun and stay and make a weekend. I know when I go to those Blues games, the St. Louis Blues hockey game, and if I accidentally park in the top level of the uh, parking garage it's a pain you sit there forever so this is a great idea well we saw that this year at, after our indycar race i had a band playing a band named by the name of steel panther which they were they did a family friendly show for that one but th at one point we had 500 fans watching steel panther play for an hour after the race. You had to over. run them out later on? We basically had time to Time to go out. home. <laughs> by the time they were ready to leave, everybody else was gone, so it was a good, easy, even flow. But we're going to have, you know, I'm going to have things going on all the way into the evening. And, and I saw that too. Julie out at Phoenix Raceway does an incredible job yeah. with the fans. They've really rebuilt Phoenix. It's nice. And they had a, after every race this year, they have an area called the Barn that Jeff Gordon helps I've seen with the that. program. And they had bands playing. They bring the champions in there. So we want to try to make sure that the race winner sticks around, talks to the fans, does some interviews. And, and you know, a lot of different things like that it just makes it a little bit different where people want to stay here and remember this uh, this weekend, especially after the first one, because this is going to be such an incredible moment, not only for us, but also for the city and right. for the race fans who a lot of people I'm talking to, this is going to be their first race.